now. Wow. Okay, hello and welcome to our 2016 Oscar podcasts for the youngfolks.com. Um, we're going to be covering a number of the Oscars biggest topics. Um, to Right now we're going to be talking about the best director. And the nominations this year were Tom McCarthy for Spotlight, George Miller for Mad Max Fury Road, Alejandro Inuritu for The Revenant, Adam McKay The Big Short, Lenny Abrahamson Room. Um, and before we get started, as a side note, we are not here to contest who is nominated. No, sir. Otherwise, this would go on forever. Like 30 minutes. I love to complain. <laughs> so, <laughs> I think to uh, kick it all off, how about Grant, you talk about who your pick would be for this year. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Um, um, I think I my top pick would be uh, Tom be McCarthy for Spotlight. For um, I don't, th this is the problem with this year's list of directors is, uh, I don't know if he's gonna win. Um, I think. Why do you think that? But uh, well, it's it's just um, with um, was it the Big Short just won the uh, best film uh, a couple of weeks ago? I can't remember for the award show. Choice. For Critics' Choice, I yeah. think. Yeah, Critics' Choice, and then um, some you know popularity is starting to swing towards Big Short. I thought Spotlight was gonna be the runaway choice for Best Picture, Best Director. I thought. Keaton was going to get nominated some acting stuff, but this year seems kind of weird in how popularity is swapped. Do you think the SAG Awards, because it won last night at the SAG, it's That's for true, Best for Ensemble, best cast, yeah. so do you think that might That's possibly true. help it with, you know, its other categories for the Oscars? Uh, it, it, it could. Um, you know, the Academy is a funny bag, especially with all the heat they're getting on the, uh, the, um, the acting everyone being white and not as much diversity. I don't know what they're going to do. I don't know how that affects their voting for this year at all. At the same time, the winning of it last night, the, the I mean, the SAG, like the, 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 the actors are make up like what, like 20% of the entirety. It's of the a, academy. I think There's it's a the huge, biggest percentage. Yeah. They're yeah. a huge, they're a huge percent of yeah. the, the voters in the academy. Plus spotlight has gotten nothing to praise. It's such a strong movie. I think what you're saying about like maybe Keaton getting a runaway, uh, like non, nom or not or whatever, like, Ruffalo is nominated for Best Supporting Actor, and it was such a crowded uh, nomination. Yeah. And th if you look at like screener copies and like what they were putting in for billing of, of Spotlight, nobody was in there for a lead actor. It was yeah. all the supporting yeah. performance, it's every every single performer, true. and they were all fantastic. It was a great yeah, ensemble. it was balanced, and it was hard to really pick out who you'd want to acknowledge specifically. Um, in terms of uh, Todd uh, McCarthy, though, I felt he did a great ex uh, exposition of subtle filmmaking. Um, I was very much reminded, I think we all were, of uh, All the President's Men with uh, uh, Robert Redford and uh, that movie back then. And uh, it was just very well planned out, very well paced, and it showed the evolution of an actual journalistic story and, and really got you boiled up on some of the key hits of that story as it was back then. Um, sorry? Do you think it's going to be the boyhood of this year, though, where it has a lot of critical love, it has a lot of industry love, and then the bigger movie or the more hyped out movie, like last year for Birdman against Boyhood, this year might be the mm. big short against Spotlight? Uh, it's, it's possible. I don't think so, just because, uh, you know, Boyhood was running on a very specific, I don't want to say gimmick, because I think they used the 12 years okay. filming. Well, a little bit, yeah, gimmick. But I mean, it, it worked and it was unique. Um, and then because Boyhood last year came out in the summer, we kept talking about how awesome it was. Oh, they filmed it over 12 years and we were talking about it for six to eight months. And then that the repetitiveness, you know, probably is like, oh, okay, we're done talking about this now. Um, whereas these films, they don't really have a gimmick per se. Um, I think, as far as the story goes, I think it's a two two-way race between Adam McKay and Tom McCarthy. Maybe uh, Miller uh, for Mad Max as an outsider. Well, we'll get to that in a know. second. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So um, the Academy for the past couple of years hasn't aligned the director with Best Picture. And I think this year they might go back to that. Where it, I think so. Yeah. Uh, and so whoever wins Best Director, I think that's gonna who's going to be to win Best Picture. But it's it's... Uh, very random. 
if I if I may about the comparison between Birdman and and Boyhood, where those were two very different movies and two directors with very different styles, mm. obviously. Well, I mean the way that I don't mean how they were compared against each other in terms of movies. I mean mm. that Boyhood had the push all the way up until like literally the month before, right? And it was a smaller yeah. dark until Birdman dropped out and it was a new hot thing. But my my, yeah. my point being that um. The Big Short and Spotlight are both grand ensemble cast films, mm -hmm. both about a very real crisis in the last mm -hmm. decade or decade and a half. So it's going to be very kind of like probably similar in terms of these people sitting at home watching all of these screeners. It's like I know yeah. I watched them back to back myself. Um, oh, okay. You kind of see yeah. like kind of those parallels stylistically, but it is going to come down to the style. And, and Grant, what you said about um, his work on Spotlight, the pacing is, a, is one of the strongest things about what he did in that movie. And that is very, very important. But also he got a lot out of actors. Like I never mm -hmm. personally care all too much about Rock, Mark Ruffalo as a performer and thought he really? turned out a fantastic performance. You need to see You Can Count on mm -hmm. Me. But, um... <laughs> it's up, it'll be on the list. There's always one on the list. But Evan, let's jump to your performance. <laughs> okay, uh, to my your... performance is the most hypey thing. Director, boy. I said performance. Sorry. <laughs> my best performance of a director. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is George Miller from Mad Max Fury Road. And here's the deal: is I make the comparison with him and uh, Inuritu. So here's the deal: they both make a movie about survival in some kind of wasteland. It just so happens that one seems to be in a northern snowy wasteland and the other did it in what's supposed to be Australia but is really Africa, okay? And you have all these genuine stunts and all of this like non-verbal storytelling. And George Miller, despite the fact that he's making an action movie here, is a master of his craft. Notoriously, like they said on the Junketing for Fury Road, he didn't really have a script he had the movie planned out in his head and he mm -hmm. had storyboards from the 90s and that's what they were going off of and it was off of the goodwill of his crew and his cast, whether it wavered or not <laughs> from some of them. He had a vision and mm -hmm. through that, he, he made probably the most technically sound movie of the year despite the fact that it was this bombastic two and a half, two hour plus car chase. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'll be happy. On that, on that, yeah. Yeah. Um, on that yeah, point, Evan, I think, I think Miller did, Miller did uh, very, very well. well. His, he had yeah. that movie that was movie chaotic. Was chaotic. <laughs> and great, he, greatly chaotic. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And that's he was able to create meaning out of complete chaos, and have us associate it with chaos. Some people are maybe not person. That's a hard comparison to begin with, but. Um, it was he he balanced that film out very well, I thought, and as in spacing out some of the action sequences and then making them mean something to the story rather than just have explosions like you know some other filmmakers we know. <laughs> right. Well, exactly exactly what we said it's chaotic, and the way that he he pointed the camera, the way that he was telling the story, the way he framed things between four corners. There's always something important that he is allowing you to be focused on that you don't even realize, and that like I said. That's just the means of his craft, and that's mm -hmm. he's he's a very talented film filmmaker, and I would love to see him make either another Mad Max or something completely new that's not Happy Feet. I would I would love it. I think he's I, a great. I still want him to do uh, Man of Steel too, but you know I don't know. If that's <laughs> that, it's, he's not, it, it's not it's not worth him. <laughs> yeah, Allie, what's your pick? My pick is the opposite of yours. Go for um, it. Because I I'm not not even to say that this is the most the best directing that I saw this year, but I think it's some that got the least amount of credit for how well it did. And that's Lenny Abrahamson from Room. And he's been one of my favorites recently for things such as this and Frank, all that I thought. I thought they were oh, most, Frank, it's right. Yeah, he did. He's a very interesting you know filmmaker and he's specific and he doesn't rely on the same tricks. And I think people didn't give him credit in Rome because after a certain point, I mean, this isn't a spoiler, it's in the trailer, when they get out of Rome, mm -hmm. it kind of becomes a different film. But the thing that he did so intelligently was the fact that when we're in Rome for the first 45 minutes or so, it seems huge. It seems like it's a, like, you know, we see it from the kid's point of view. And I think the way he framed it, and then when he framed it once it got out in certain shots so that we, like, the way Jack was laying down, it looked like he's still in a row where he's still always surrounded by these four walls. And I just think, and I mean, the, the escape scene alone is shot with such pre um, precision and such, like, 
tense mounting like panic that he's somehow not going to get away and i just mm. think he did all these really small tricks these really small things to make it so that the emotional impact is heightened that i kind of wish he was getting more attention i mean obviously he got attention just by being nominated but i think people are thinking it's just because he you know he's riding the wave mm. of the film Whereas I think it's just because he's a very talented director. <laughs> and I think he's somebody, out of everybody nominated, I'm the most excited to see what he does next. Mm -hmm. So no, I, I don't think he's going to win. <laughs> I haven't had a chance to see uh, yeah. but everything, uh, like I'm very curious about how he implements that story. I, um, I'm just kind of going off what I know of the trailers. I'm, uh, it's my next to, to watch, but... It, for him to make that story work on screen and not offend anybody, that's pretty amazing on its own. Like you, it's kind of tying a tight rope on you know kidnapping that subject, and it could go very wrong. And I'm from what I've heard, he's handled it very well. Yeah, for sure. For, for, um, for something that seems so dire, it's actually a strangely optimistic story. Yeah, I'll be curious mm. to see what you think when uh, you see it. But I think that's. Yeah, about that's about what we uh, got. Yeah, we <laughs> have awesome. Yeah, directors are talented. These are these are just our favorites, and this, those are the reasons why. Um, we would love for you to share with us, you the audience. You, know, you Grant, you already shared with us. <laughs> um, you the audience, if you'd like to share with us and join the conversation, we're going to be tweeting live on the night of the Oscars. You can follow us on the Twitter account at tyf official and using the hashtag has using the hashtag hashtag tyf Oscars. <laughs> 